driving home. Let me make sure that this is working first. Driving home, I'm gonna talk about, first off, first off, first off, when I do these driving home videos, some of you are gonna be like, you're a distracted driver. Don't do that. Well, I'm not looking at the camera, okay? Just driving and I'm talking, so chill hands-free, not looking at a phone screen. There's not even a screen for me to look at, all right? So there's my disclaimer. Don't do this at home if you're looking at like a cell phone screen or something like that, or you're getting distracted. So what I wanna talk about today is three things that new technicians really screw up often, and a lot of times it's innocently, when they're trying to diagnose a compressor, and then end up with them saying that a compressor is bad when it is not bad. And the first one is really simple, and it comes down to doing a proper visual inspection. I've seen technicians diagnose a shortage compressor because it was tripping the breaker and they never actually went to the terminals. So whenever you're checking for a short on a compressor, you have to check it at the terminals themselves. So you pull the terminals off, pull the wires off, and you check it at the terminals. Don't do it at the contact or up at the top of the leads because you could have leads that have come apart or corroded or shorted or whatever. It's a really dumb one. Not a mistake I've ever made. I have made the mistake um, when really early on when I was probably 19 or so, I made the mistake of telling somebody because their terminal was damaged that I, could, I couldn't get a spade on it, that they had to replace it. And then somebody went back in with the terminal repair kit and replaced it and made me look stupid. So always best to give the customer all their options. Let them decide what they want to do, what they value. Just keep a terminal repair kit on my truck. Yeah, the terminal burns off. A lot of times that can be an indication of another problem, but a lot of times it just means it's a loose terminal. So one is misdiagnosed compressors because they didn't visually inspect and check at the terminals. So always do that. A side note, these glasses look stupid. Sorry about that. My mother bought them for me, okay? And I happen to have them here in the van and it's bright. It's Florida. I'm not trying to look cool. Mistake number two is, is they don't let the compressor cool off before condemning it. So when a compressor goes into thermal overload, especially when it goes into thermal overload because of a running condition that's caused it to be very hot, like physically the entire shell hot. There's a difference between heat and the windings that occurs, like when you have a bad capacitor or something like that, and it goes out really quick because of a locked compressor. Those cool off really quick because all of the heat is isolated in the windings themselves. The windings become heaters and the thermal overload is inside the windings, so it cuts off really quick. But when a compressor is running hot, and this especially happens when it's low on charge or when it has a serious restriction or something like that, where it's not, you know, the result is really low suction pressure. And so that's low mass flow rate and high superheat, and that causes compressors to overheat. So there's a lot of reasons that cause compressors to overheat. We're not gonna go into all those, that's a different video, but when a compressor overheats because of a running condition, it can go out on a thermal overload and stay out on thermal overload for a really long time. And so some people will use a hose. Hose can help speed up the process. I've cooled off a lot of compressors with a hose, but recognize that with a big compressor especially, you have a lot of thermal mass there. And so sometimes it takes a while for that thing to reset. So just because you can't get that thermal overload to reset, which is an open condition between common and start, common and run, and but you still see a path with your own meter between um, start and run, and the compressor won't run, that's an indication of an open thermal overload. You gotta give it some time. Don't be too quick, because you're gonna end up condemning the compressor, and then somebody else is gonna go back out once the thermal overload resets. Throw the disconnect, it's gonna come on, and they're gonna think that you were trying to scan them. And again, this is something that I think a lot of technicians misdiagnose just because they're in a hurry, and they don't think that, that they can be that difficult. Um, one trick that I've learned on older compressors, if they're uh, on, kind of on their last leg anyway, and you know that it's it's cool, um, sometimes you can kind of bump it a little bit and that'll help that thermal overload reset a little, you know, a little quicker sometimes. Again, some of you are, you know, PRS are probably like, you know, don't bump the compressor. But again, if it's an older compressor, sometimes to get that thing to reset, just a little bit of bumping it around, maybe you grab the suction line, shake it a little bit, I've done that. Especially in old reciprocating compressors where they are on suspension and so shaking it around help get it broken loose. Final thing that technicians often get wrong is they think that you can home terminal to terminal. You can home terminal to terminal, and that's helpful to find an open winding or an open thermal overload, but finding a short by ohming terminal to terminal is really tough because a lot of compressors have low resistance to terminal to terminal anyway. And you can't work Ohm's law just with an ohm meter ohming at a compressor and then figuring out what the amperage is gonna be. That's not how that works because it's an inductive load. And so the, the bulk of the resistance in a compressor is what we call inductive reactance. And so the total impedance, which is total resistance, resistance and inductive reactance kind of mixed together, that's what you care about. That's what results in the amperage of a compressor, but you can't just ohm a compressor out and figure out what the amperage 
of it's going to be using Ohm's Law. You know, those of you who've been to school, you think it's going to be cool, you do the, you ohm it out, and you're like, oh, this is way lower than it should be, the compressor's bad. You ohm a compressor to ground, and then as a final test, you isolate the compressor, and then isolate the terminal so it's, the compressor's disconnected. You reset the breaker, the breaker resets with the compressor isolated, then you know that it's the compressor. That's kind of your final test. But don't go condemning compressors because you're ohming leg to leg and reading low ohms, and definitely don't use a mega ohm meter, especially like the Supco, whatever that thing is, and ohm leg to leg, because of course it's gonna read bad, because leg to leg is very low ohms. That's natural that it would be. And a lot of guys will say, well, it should be, you know, this common to start and common to run should equal start to run. Yeah, that's just how the motor's wired. I mean, that's, that's just pretty much always gonna be the case, unless it's a big shorted mass, then you're gonna see a short ground. So when you're checking for a, a, a grounded condition, you're checking it to ground, and then you're using that isolation test as final, kind of your final verification that it is the compressor. But a lot of compressors get misdiagnosed because guys do that. Another thing is a lot of scroll compressors get misdiagnosed, especially as bad, using that Sepco Mega Ohm meter because even um, Copeland says that 0.5 mega ohms, anything lower than that, they'll say that it's bad to ground. But that meter shows at 20 mega ohms, it'll start showing it failed. So you could have a good scroll, a scroll compressor that's fine that that meter is showing as bad. Now for resips and open motors, yeah, okay, fine. 20 mega ohms is kind of the drop dead point. And, and generally speaking, you know, 20 mega ohms is pretty low to ground. I know I'm getting a little bit on the edges of this here. The third mistake that newbie techs make is that they measure leg to leg and they think that they can find a leg to leg short. And that's, it's possible for you to, but you would have to know what it was supposed to be in the first place. And most of you don't know that. So number one, visual inspect the terminals. Check at the terminals themselves rather than back up at the contactor. Isolate the compressor. Two, give it more time for thermal overload. Don't get impatient. Three, don't ohm leg to leg and use that as the only factor for condemning the compressor. Do that isolation test, you know, because tripping the breaker, isolate it, reset. If the breaker resets at that point, then okay. Those are your three things. Compressor diagnosis, biggest mistakes I see newbies condemn compressors for. Thanks for watching.